Myself, Dr. Rajeshri Dua, Assistant Professor, Department of Electrical and Electronics Engineering, SBIST. So, I had already started discussing about the basics of vehicle performance, which is a topic related to the subject electrical and hybrid vehicle. So, I have stopped at the grading resistance in the previous video. From there, I will be continuing. So, as we have seen that whenever we are considering the basics of the vehicle performance, we are considering that the vehicle is moving uphill. So, there are several forces acting on the vehicle. One was the grading resistance that we have already discussed. The second one is the aerodynamic drag. As the name suggests, this is something related to the movement of the wind which is having an effect on the vehicle's acceleration. So, aerodynamic drag as we can see is divided into two components. One is the shape drag and another is the skin friction. So, what is shape drag? So, shape drag is something which is dependent upon the vehicle's shape. What happens is that whenever a vehicle is moving forward, it tries to give a thrust on the air which is in the forward direction. So, whenever the vehicle is actually pushing the air in the forward direction, that air cannot instantaneously move backwards. So, what happens? It creates a zone of high pressure. And what happens to the air at the back of the vehicle, that is the rear end of the vehicle? That air also cannot easily come up and fill up this high pressure zone. So what happens? It will create a low pressure zone at the rear end of the vehicle. So there is kind of a push and pull concept. We are pushing the air and the air from the back is trying to pull it. And this is dependent upon the shape of the vehicle. So that is why the name drag is coming. And shape drag means this drag is completely determined by the shape of the vehicle. So the car is moving in the forward direction. The wind in the forward part of the vehicle is creating a high pressure. Also, at the back end of the vehicle, that is the rear part of the vehicle, there is a low pressure zone. So, due to this high pressure zone and the low pressure zone related to a push-pull motion, this shape drag is there. Now, moving to the next component, which is known as the skin friction. What happens is that we can consider that the vehicle when it's moving, then the air which is just in very close vicinity to the vehicle that is moving at almost the speed of the vehicle. While air molecules which are quite far from the vehicle, they are having their own speed. So, there is a zone where the air molecules are actually having different velocities. So, because of that, a friction component is coming. And the mathematical analysis is given in this format is that FW is nothing but half rho AFCD V plus V, VW. So, what is this rho? That is the air density. Speed of the vehicle is V. Vehicle frontal area is AF. And the air density is given. So, most of the values we know. And if we put these values here, we get a value of this FW. And what is CD? CD is very important. CD is known as the aerodynamic drag coefficient that is characterized by the shape of the vehicle and VW is the component of the wind speed. One thing one needs to keep in mind while solving mathematical problems or while solving this topic of mathematical analysis is that this particular VW, it will have a positive sign when the component is opposite to the direction of the vehicle speed and it will have a negative sign when the component is in the same direction as that of the vehicle speed. So, if these things are kept in mind and data is available, we can easily calculate the value of this FW which combines the skin friction as now if we add with the screen friction the shape drag component, the entire component gives us the aerodynamic drag coefficient for the which is a resistive force for the vehicle movement. Now moving to the next part. This is another important part. The vehicles are moving, the wheels are having tires. The tires are the main components which are getting um, against the road. So there will be a rolling resistance or a rolling friction which is a component that is interacting between the tire and the road. And if this rolling resistance component is very high, so the tires will not roll and the vehicle cannot move in the forward direction. So what happens is that the rolling resistance component is there because of the hysteresis of the tire material. 
Now, hysteresis is a word which is not unknown because we have already learnt about the hysteresis of magnetic materials. And as one can see from this figure, this particular plot between the force P and the deformation Z of the tire due to loading and unloading. Loading means when the wheels are moving in the forward direction, the frontal area is loaded and the back area is unloaded. So that is what is shown in this figure and also there is a component which is known as the reaction force that is given by Pz and P is the component of the force which is acting at the center of the tire. So if we plot this force P and deformation, P1 for loading and P2 for unloading, what this curve is showing this is quite similar to the hysteresis curve or the pH loop curve of magnetic materials and because of this this rolling resistance is one of the important components that plays the role for accelerating the vehicle. So what we can see from the next figure is that this is actually the figure which we are showing when the tire is standstill, that is the car is not moving or the vehicle is not moving. Now when the vehicle is moving, what happens is that as we can see that the frontal area is getting more pressure and the backward area is having less pressure. So now this P and this P which was aligned in the previous standstill condition they are not also aligned and there is a force F which is acting at the center of mass also there is a small area A so these are all things related to physics so what happens is that whenever the tire is moving there will be a moment uh, so this, if this is a moving direction there will be a moment and we can write the mathematical expression as this that is P into A. So this TR is the rolling resistance ground reaction force which is nothing but multiplication of P into A. P is that force and A is already given. Now from there we can also write that is the to keep the wheel rolling a force F is acting on the center of the wheels which is required to balance this rolling resistance moment. So this is given by PA by RB or PFR where RD is the effective radius of the tire. If we are solving any problem this effective radius will be given to the students and FR is nothing but A by RD which is also known as the rolling resistance coefficient. Now all this analysis for the rolling resistance coefficient I have already explained when the vehicle is moving on a smooth road. But Initially, I have already said that we are discussing this mathematical analysis for the basics of vehicle performance whenever the vehicle is moving up a grade. So for that matter, this particular expression FR is equal to PFR will have this component cos alpha where alpha will be the road angle. So all this mathematical formula need to be kept in mind for the students whenever they are trying to solve a problem related to the mathematical model analysis or whenever they are getting a descriptive questions related to this topic like the topic of uh, mathematical models to analyze the vehicle performance. So from all these things what we need to keep in mind is that this grading resistance, this rolling resistance, this upping resistance, all these resistive forces added together that value should be less than the traction force or the propulsion force that the car is having. Only then we can uh, move the car uphill and this uh, entire analysis will be a successful one. So uh, with this, with all this mathematical analysis kept in mind, uh, what we can show is that this is a table which is showing the different rolling resistance component. If the value of rolling resistance component is not provided, then one can have an idea about the rolling resistance from this table. And this rolling resistance, Fr, one needs to keep in mind, it is dependent upon a number of things. So it is a function of the tire material, tire structure, tire temperature, tire pressure, the tread geometry of the road, road roughness, road material, and the presence of absence or liquids on the road. Because when wherever we are driving a vehicle, we can see if the road is bumpy, if the road is slippery, then it's very difficult to drive the vehicle. So for that matter, what we can uh, say that for fuel saving, see if we are trying to exert more pressure on the engine to move the vehicle forward, so there will be more and more fuel consumption. Our main need is so that 
we have to have an efficient fuel consumption. So, for fuel saving, low resistance tires for passengers cars have been developed and one thing one has to keep in mind, for them the rolling resistance coefficient is fixed which is very much less than 0 0.01. So, the lesser the rolling resistance is there, the more easy it will be to roll the vehicle forward or move the vehicle forward. And if the value is not given, then this table will be beneficial. There also we can see that the rolling resistance coefficient is quite less. So, that was our main aim. So, by putting this value of the rolling resistance coefficient and if we have the value of alpha, we can easily calculate the values of all the resistive components that are needed for analyzing the basics of vehicle performance. So I think with all the components put together, if we have the data, we can easily solve a problem and we can easily find the physics behind or the mathematical analysis behind the basics of vehicle performance and mathematical models to analyze vehicle performance which is basically the stepping stone for learning um, any vehicle performance whether it's an electric vehicle or whether it's an hybrid vehicle.